Hey guys, um, <laughs> I don't know where to start because I feel like I have filmed this exact same video in 2020 where I committed to starting my fitness journey again and it didn't work out. But here's to turning over a new leaf. I have got my notes and I have a more structured plan this time around. Uh, so I'm hoping that this will be the one where I start my fitness journey 2.0 again and I'm successful in it. A lot of you are here because you have a lot of context about my fitness journey already. Um, but what I would recommend is to pause right here and go back and watch that video that I made last year, um, which is titled The Truth About My Weight. I will link it in my description box. Um, the reason why that video is a good one to watch to get all of the context that you need is because I summarized my fitness journey up until 2020. Uh, for those of you who are new here, um, I went on a fitness journey in 2016 and I lost about 40 kgs in a year, year and a half um, and eliminating or better managing a lot of the health issues that I had surrounding my weight and um, I documented it on Instagram and subsequently on YouTube and now I'm in a situation where I am doing it again. For all of you that are just watching and haven't subscribed yet and are interested in following me in my fitness journey and maybe starting yours as well parallelly, um, subscribe to my channel. Also switch on your notifications so you will know every time I post a new video. And if you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up because that also informs me that you are enjoying this content and uh, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so I quickly wanted to address why there's been such a big gap from the time I proposed that I was going to start my fitness journey to now where I'm actually planning on starting it. Unfortunately, the last one year has continued to be an extension of what the year before that was. We are all staying at home. Uh, the domestic work has doubled, tripled. I personally had a family emergency for a few months which uh, needed me to disappear for a longer period of time uh, from the internet altogether. But honestly, I feel like I could sit here and give you all the reasons in the world. But the true reason is that I just lacked the inclination to do so. I didn't have a plan in place. My motivations were not right. Um, and I just didn't feel ready. So um, today I'm here and I feel a lot more ready. And I'll give you the reasons why I am starting this fitness journey again and why it feels really important to succeed this time around. The first reason, and this will always be why I pursue fitness, it's because of my health. I have started to see signs everywhere which indicate that my sedentary lifestyle, my eating habits and my weight gain are not working in my favor. I start to have aches and pains if I'm walking for a really long time, my joints hurt, my periods are starting to get quite delayed, I can even show you my report on flow. I have really regular periods when I'm physically active, when I am eating well and I'm light on my feet, but now because all of those things don't happen, uh, my periods are getting delayed. And overall, I have just been feeling really uncomfortable in my body. My clothes don't fit anymore. Um, I have a lot of indigestion when I eat later in the night. And so I have really restless nights um, because my eating habits are so erratic and I... I just sort of put all of this together and capped it with the reason that, well, I'm turning 30 this year in December and it's a pretty big landmark for me. If I look at my 20s, it's been such a great, rewarding and difficult time. I would say that my fitness journey has been such a highlight of my 20s that I want to even come into my 30s feeling healthy, feeling good. And I think that's a really, really big motivator for me. I have exactly 12 weeks starting today, September 6th. Um, and uh, I'm not sure what date I'm going to post this video though. So just FYI, I've already started. So those are my motivations this time around for kickstarting my fitness journey 2.0. I uh, want to give a heads up for this next bit. I am going to be talking about my weight in terms of numbers. I am going to be showing my photos that I have taken in terms of what are going to be my before photos. 
Um, so if any of this is going to trigger you or upset you, uh, that's not my intention at all. I also want to offer an explanation for why I'm talking about my weight in numbers. And this is purely from my perspective. The more I stigmatize for me talking about my weight, um, the more fearful I am of it. But if I address my weight in a very objective way and I treat weight as just data, um, I find that it's a really great objective way to sort of keep track of my fitness goals. I also understand weight a little bit more where I know that it's just not going to be this gradual and steady decline. I know that there are going to be ups and downs, but I'm sort of okay with but just monitoring the ups and downs. Um, that's a really good way for me to progress. Uh, the second piece is that tracking my weight is the way that I stay motivated. Now I know that this could work in the other way where if my number doesn't move, I'm going to feel demotivated, but that's not who I am. I have come so far in my fitness journey and I'm so freaking proud of my body that I'm just going to treat it as okay this is just another day just another week of my fitness journey and I'm just going to keep persevering on um, but seeing that number move in a positive direction and for me personally to come to my healthy weight range um, is really motivating for me um, and it signals progress uh, in the next clip I'm going to show you what my current weight is and then uh, we'll go into a little bit of my photos that I've taken photos are one of the best ways that I motivate myself and if there's something that sounds appealing to you I encourage you to do the same as well um, so yeah let's just quickly go to that all right it is 6 September 10 a.m and I am going to check my weight eighty six point six okay so now quickly let's take a look at my before photos here they are One of the things that I also wrote down here, which is very important for me to talk about, is what I'm going to be doing differently this time. Um, I'll be honest with you, I've had a lot of worries about being able to pull off what I pulled off in 2016. I am so much older now and my life is so much more complex. And I already know that it's going to be a lot more interesting and different this time around. There are different constraints this time around but at the same time there are uh, some positives as well because I know so much about this space now I understand my body. Uh, what I'm not going to be doing this time is any form of extreme dieting. I'm going to take you through what I'm going to be eating. So again if you haven't subscribed to my channel subscribe now. You will know when I post a video and you can follow along. I'm going to put in my numbers and understand what my total daily energy expenditure is. I've just pulled up any old tool. My gender is female, my age is 29, my weight as we just calculated is 86.6, my height is 165 centimeters I want to say and my activity is I'm going to say moderate exercise which is about three to five days a week. It's not allowing me to enter a decimal for my weight so I'm just gonna make it 86. Alright so my total daily energy expenditure is about 2400 calories and I am going to be cutting about 500 calories from this uh, roughly and that's going to be my intake for the rest of my fitness journey. I will keep adjusting, keep updating based on how it's going. What I'm essentially doing is going on about a 20% calorie deficit um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's going to be really simple. Um, if you have any questions, just leave it down in the comment section. I will take it up. 
the other thing that I am not going to be doing this time is being really boring and monotonous with my workouts. Um, I know that I have constantly said that in the start of my weight loss journey, I just did like a cross trainer for an hour every day. Um, and I find that I can't do that now. Uh, I am going to potentially step out into the greenery um, and maybe take long walks, go do some weight training and I will share all of that with you of course. Um, but yes, I'm definitely going to be mixing up my activities. Another thing that I am going to be doing with when it comes to my diet is um, I'm going to be eating a lot more protein. This is something that I didn't monitor carefully in round one. I have gotten used to eating a high protein diet and I find that my muscles recover better. I am able to curb my hunger a lot better. Um, and it really helps just generally my overall well-being, my hair health, my nails, um, if I'm able to get enough protein in my daily diet. Yeah, that's about it guys. Um, in my next video, I am thinking that I want to take you through what a day of eating is going to look like with my 20% or about 500 calories um, deficit of my TDEE. I will show you what I'm potentially going to be doing on a day when I have time to cook and on a day when I don't have time to cook. I feel like this process should be accessible to both kinds of people or both kinds of lifestyles. I just want to give a disclaimer that this is how I'm approaching it. I'm not saying that this is going to work for you. What I would recommend is that if you don't know much about fitness and if you are not aware of what your body needs, speak to a nutritionist, speak to a fitness coach and see how you can kickstart a process that is safe and correct for you given your lifestyle, given your abilities, given your preferences. And uh, with that disclaimer, I will see you soon in my next video. Bye.